Brighton and Hove Archaeological Society, it's a local archaeology group, uh, established in 1906. Uh, it was uh, the renowned museum curator and local archaeologist Herbert Toms that founded uh, it, it as the Brighton and Hove Archaeology Club. We're a registered charity and our finance is purely from member subscriptions and voluntary donations. Uh, we have a membership of just under 200. As well as conducting archaeological investigations in the Brighton area, uh, we also run programmes of winter lectures and day schools and summer walks and trips. One of the advantages of being a purely amateur group is that on our own digs, we've got plenty of times to stop, chat and have tea. That's our, the dig we've had in the past four years. This is a, a Norman manorial complex at Obingdon, just outside Brighton. Our main aim is to promote the study of archaeology and local history and to ensure the proper recording and preservation of local antiquities and relics. Our society has a long history of involvement with Whitehall Hill. Uh, when allotments were planned to encroach on the, the outer edge of the, the monument, uh, R.P. Ross Williamson uh, did some excavations in 1929 and the society uh, was involved with that. A society member, Elliot C. Kerwin, uh, conducted <coughs> excavations uh, when uh, Manor Road was being constructed across the site. And as we heard, after uh, Monument View had been built, uh, there was some investigation, uh, and the society was involved with that as well, and that was led by Miles Russell and David Rudley. With regards to Monument View, one of our longest standing members and a person of considerable local archaeological knowledge, John Funnell, uh, he <coughs> observed that some of the councillors at the time were wondering what all the fuss was about over some lumps and bumps in the ground. Uh, that gives an indication of the standing of the monument at that time. Uh, with the local authority. So we've been involved with the uh, monument for a long time and other activities that we've engaged in. Uh, litter clearance, we've seen how it's been used as a uh, fly tipping site. Uh, the litter clearance had to be uh, curtailed when we realised the amount of drug paraphernalia around, including syringes, which had obviously been used. Uh, so we, we couldn't subject our volunteers to that sort of hazard. Uh, we petitioned for having the bollards installed, and as we've heard initially, they were wooden ones, uh, which were not very effective in stopping people who were determined to uh, use the site as a campsite and they were chainsawed through and eventually replaced by the, the steel and concrete ones. We've done some uh, surveys of areas around the site when uh, the site has been disturbed. Uh, in particular there was a grave once which caused considerable land disturbance as well as noise disturbance uh, and the society have a look at the land after that uh, see if anything uh, had been revealed by the land disturbance. Uh, we campaigned to have an interpretation board 
installed and, and we did get one but unfortunately it wasn't near the centre of the site it was on a, a little used path on the periphery uh, the interpretation board this time after the big white hawk project is much more centrally located in recent years uh, VHAS have been vigorously campaigning to add a local archaeology gallery at the Brighton Hove Museums at uh, the Pavilion. Uh, and fingers crossed, this year, towards the end of this year, we may see that gallery open and it should feature Whitehall Hill in that, as well as other local sites. So against this background of involvement with Whitehall Hill, the uh, Society was very pleased to be invited to join the other partners in the Dig Whitehall project. Our president and chairman at the time, Donald Richardson, had had previous experience of heritage lottery funded grant applications, so he was a natural choice to represent the HAS during the application process. There's Donald towards the back, and John Funnell, who I also remember, mentioned is the uh, man in the white shirt uh, to the right. So we were all delighted when the application was successful. And I'm sure this experience of being involved in the application process will stand the society in good stead should we ever decide uh, to apply for any funding in our own right. <clears throat> The Dig Whitehall project had been successful in... So, <coughs> so, how did our society benefit from involvement in this project? First of all, a number of us were involved with the uh, magnetometry survey uh, at the start of the project. And we received excellent tuition on uh, magnetometry survey techniques from John Cook. This is the back of him in the centre there, and the front of him on the left there. This led directly to one of the participants, uh, Pete Tollhurst, one of our members. He decided to take on the mantle of leader of our geophysics and survey team. We had a RM15 resistivity machine at that time, but it seemed to be on permanent loan to other organisations. Uh, so they stimulated us to, to recover that, and we also bought a, a second hand total station. And since then, Pete has been involved in many surveys uh, with partners uh, from this project and from other groups, uh, doing <coughs> surveys, particularly with uh, Brighton Museums and Brighton University doing surveys within uh, Pavilion Gardens and Preston Manor Park Gardens. And currently, we have a request to do a resistivity survey uh, in the Pres on the Preston Manor croquet lawns. Many of our members helped with supervising the volunteer Diggers during the excavation phase of the project, and a lot of them commented on uh, how pleasing it was to be able to pass on their knowledge, no matter how limited their knowledge was, to people who were complete novices. And I think it uh, increased their confidence in their own abilities uh, and uh, enthused them. We also manned a stall. Uh, on, the, on the open day and that gave us the opportunity of course to promote our own uh, activities so as, as a result of that we had quite a few new members join the dig uh, as I said that dig was at Oving Dean at the time uh, and several more of the volunteers joined the society for other activities uh, that we engage in the field walking and lectures and, and trips. More important than recruiting new members though was the establishment 
or renewal of a working relationship with our partner groups. John Funnell has commented that in earlier decades it seemed easier for volunteers to become involved with local professional digs, but understandably with the growth of developer funded archaeology these opportunities are now few and far between. That could result in uh, amateur groups becoming more isolated and uh, their knowledge stagnating as to new methods of excavation and finds handling. However, with the good links and avenues of communication forged during the Dig Whitehawk project, there's far greater opportunity for best practice to filter down from professionals to us amateurs. And much of this information transfer is not in a formal manner, uh, but comes through chance comments and discussions during regular informal contact, which is encouraged by ASE's open door attitude. A simple example of this is that uh, during discussions we realised that our use of acid-free tissue paper to wrap certain finds uh, was uh, now not recommended and that we should be using jiffy paper. So that led to a repackaging session in my dining room at home. Similarly, our links with Brighton Museums has been greatly announced. Following involvement with the work to recatalogue and repackage of finds from previous Whitehawk digs, a number of our members have continued to attend the museum on a regular basis as volunteers and have regular, almost weekly, society displays of artefacts for handling by museum visitors. We also arrange displays during museum events, such as the Festival of Archaeology. As well as engaging with the public at the museum, we have an outreach programme, part of which is based around Whitehall Hill. We have guided walks, and recently, a group of 90 school children were given a guided tour as part of the curriculum activities on the Stone Age. This is interesting that during these tours of the hill, sometimes people mention that they think it's a Roman camp. And they are amazed to learn how old and how significant it really is. It's our hope that never again will anyone ask what is all the fuss about over some bumps and lumps in the ground. <coughs> Finally, but by no means least, we gained a much deeper understanding and appreciation of the work of the park rangers uh, within the city's open spaces. As much of our area of activity is within the city's parks and open spaces, it's vital that we understand their concerns and interests. And that's our current day, which is a uh, site called Rocky Plum. It's an Iron Age Romano British farmstead site. Uh, it's at Rocky Plum, which is in the middle of Stanley Park on the outskirts of Brighton. So to sum up, from the perspective of Brighton Hove Archaeological Society, the Dig White Oak project was certainly a success and led to a number of positive outcomes. If the other partner groups achieved similar positive outcomes, now I can think the same. It was a great success. Thank you.